Hey everyone, Callum here. And workshops, sheds, garages, they're a funny thing. In the UK and Australia especially, we have this sort of real cultural association with the shed, a space in which a person can retreat and tinker on things. And it's sort of come to represent that idea of the British innovation or invention that's born not in a fancy laboratory or a high tech workshop, but at the old shed at the bottom of a garden. It's also tied up in a frustratingly male orientated way, the man cave or the man shed, which is a bit of a silly thing to say really, because both my sister and my girlfriend both use workshops and sheds to build and tinker on things just as much, if not more than I do. However, there's something in every shed or garage in particular that feels the most sentimental or constant to me and that is the radio. So this here is my Schenner or grandfather's old radio that I now use in my own workshop. It sat for many years in his garage, but now that I use the adjacent shed as my own workspace, it's sort of moved in there. Um, this is a Philips 425, and you can see the old Philips Shield logo here that was in use from around 1968 to 2008, and you can get a very rough idea of the date from that. But this model, the 425, dates from the early to mid-1970s, probably 1972 to 1975, that sort of range. It's a pretty standard affordable radio of the time. It was probably the kitchen or living room radio before it got demoted to the garage, but I must say I do very much like the clean, simple design you've got here. There's a nice mix of the standard shinier chrome and wood effect, but the blue colours on the lettering is quite nice and quite aesthetically pleasing as well. There's also this black plastic casing on the back and uh, pretty standard. It's not Bakelite or anything though, it's more of an early plastic. You can also see the different channels labelled on the front and although LW and MW here would make you think that this was English, so long wave and short wave, I think it's actually German and I believe they have the same abbreviation, so Langsvel and Mittelvel. Apologies for the terrible German pronunciation there. The reason I know that though is because these last two labels are KW and UKW and that's the German for Kurzweil, which is short wave, and Ultra Kurzweil, which is very short wave, or VHF, which is essentially FM. I always enjoy looking at these old radios and seeing the pre-printed stations as well. Things like Radio Luxembourg and Strasbourg that were very popular in the UK in the 50s and 60s. Also during that sort of pirate radio craze back when the BBC had a real monopoly over the radio airwaves in the country. Interestingly, the BBC in this is actually lowercase, which looks a bit odd. There's the uppercase B, a lowercase B, and then a lowercase C. Nowadays though, the majority of these channels and waves are dead or reassigned. And up here in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, really the only stations that have ever come through are still the BBC channels or maybe local independent stations. Growing up I didn't actually realise there were any other large radio stations other than BBC 1, 2, 3 or 4 and it took me a while to realise how much choice people actually get down in the south of the country. So features and it's got this pretty neat little dial for tuning and um, that'll move the little measurements up and down the tuning range and you've also got this volume slider and equaliser slider that we'll get back to in a moment and the bands selectors here on the top. Nothing fancy to be honest. I mean, again, this is not a wonderful classic radio that collectors will fight over. It was bought to be cheap, reliable and functional and it does that job very well. And of course, the proof is in the pudding. It's done its job over the years and decades without any form of maintenance other than what I'm doing to it probably today. I figured what I could do at the very least though was give it a bit of a clean. I mean, it's not bad, but decades of rust and grime certainly have taken off a little bit of the shine. Some of the things like the corrosion on the metal parts and the odd wear and tear isn't going to come off or isn't really worth fixing. But at least now it's a little bit cleaner and doesn't look so worn out and I actually think it turned out quite nicely. I also thought I would take off the, the back and take it apart somewhat and just see if I could find any exact dates um, for when it was made. I couldn't, there wasn't really anything on the inside. But also just to see if there was any build up or dusts or anything in there. And to be honest, again, nothing. My PC is usually much dirtier after about six months of sucking in dust than that thing has been sitting amongst sawdust for about 20-30 years. But yeah, very clean, quite tidy, quite neat on the inside uh, and nothing really much to shout about. But on the front here we've got this volume slider and this this little musical note slider. Now I'm not exactly sure what this thing is meant to do. I'm assuming it's some kind of equaliser but what effect it has on the sound is pretty minimal to be honest. It seems to somewhat reduce the bass but even then I don't know if it's just my ears playing tricks on me. What I do notice is that we have a very crackly volume slider though and this is a common issue with old radios and hi-fis and amps. More often than not it's just dirt that's gotten trapped in the slider or the volume knobs. It kind of creates a dirty short circuit 
bracket underneath there. And the solution is usually just to give it a few shifts up and down, try and dislodge it basically. You can give it a wee puff of air or use contact cleaner. I found with this case, just moving it up and down got it to work much better. And to be honest, I usually just leave this set at one particular volume. So it basically means that if I accidentally touch it, it's not going to mess up anything when uh, it comes to the audio quality. I also noticed on the side here, we have a couple of input outputs. Is this sort of older XLR input? I forget the actual term for what it is, but this, like many old radios of the day, had these so that you could connect up your old reel-to-reel -reel player or whatever and use it as a sort of portable speaker. And I've been using this in the workshop for a while now, but mainly I just listen to the radio on it. But what I thought would be really handy would be to bring it into the 21st century somewhat and wire it up so that I could plug in my phone or MP3 player or whatever so that I could listen to whatever I wanted down in the workshop when I was working on various things. Now, I could and I have in the past used a little radio transmitter, but those things require batteries. They're just another thing that has to get lost. You've got to tune it, which of course can be a little bit of an annoyance on these older radios. So what I did is I dug out of my box of connectors and cables an old XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter. Now, it's not the exact same as the older female input on the actual device, but it works in the exact same way. When you connect up an audio device, you can see it works. There's audio that comes out and the headphones incidentally also work. Again, I'm probably not really ever going to use those though. These two buttons to press keep it locked in the input mode, which is really handy because that's probably how I'm going to be using most of the time down there. Since what I listen to most of the time now is spoken word podcasts, audio books, even past editions of radio shows after they've gone live or various MP3 players and old music albums that I have on there. So with my trusty Philips cleaned up and modernized somewhat, I figured I should build a proper little station for it in the workshop. So far, I've just sort of sat it on top of a little plastic set of drawers and trays, but I wanted something a little bit more permanent and also something a little bit less precarious. So I just found a nice length of wood for a shelf and put in a more solid base on top of the drawers and used a couple of brackets to keep it all secure. I also added in a couple pieces of wood trim on the edges to stop it slipping off for any reason. And well, I know it's not the work of a master craftsman, but then again, this is not the workshop of a master craftsman. It's the workshop of me, Callum Gillis, and I do stuff fast and pretty sloppily, I guess. And I just enjoy throwing things together very functionally and very fast. And uh, if you want to do this a little bit better, well, there is probably lots of better ways to put up a shelf and also lots of better musical equipment you could keep on said shelf as well. It's all for a bit of fun at the end of the day. So I put it all together, put the radio in place, but I still felt like something was missing somewhat. What I needed to have was a little cradle or phone holder so that my phone or MP3 player had something to actually sit on once I had it all set up. So I took a length of wood from my wood drawer. This is actually, I believe, from an old barrel. I found it on the shore a few weeks ago and I figured it may come in handy one day. So I cut and rasped away at it and eventually came up with this little holder. Now, originally I put in holes in the back so I could feed in wires, you know, charging cables, the, the 3.5 millimeter jack, but not only do the wires need a little bit more space, they end up pushing the phone out slightly. And I find I actually prefer to keep my phone on its side when I'm playing music, often because a lot of the time what I listen to is YouTube videos or kind of long form podcasts and documentaries, um, or it's easier to access the player when it's in landscape rather than portrait. But it's there if I ever need it for the future and I might find it more useful with different kinds of devices other than my phone. But yeah, so screwed that into place and I think it actually looks pretty elegant, not bad for 10 minutes work. And of course it acts as a neat further support for the shelf that's up there as well. But yeah, very happy with this. And like I say, I have somewhat of an obsession with old radios and old devices, but more than anything else, I like things with a story. I like objects that are imbued with markings and character of the life they've lived. And much like my trusty vice, this has the scratches and marks of decades of use. Generally generations of my family now have used and listened to this as we worked away on various now forgotten projects and jobs. I think there's something worth preserving about that. Sound and music has such strong associations and impacts with what we do and where we are. It has such a unique ability to bring us back to a particular moment or place. And many of us have heard some of our favourite music or moments in history broadcast through this, the old reliable shed radio. In the ever constant messy workshop, what usually sits unchanged and kind of ever blamed away is that music device. And it leads me to another thought. Do you have an old shed radio, a boombox or even a television or a hi-fi or a record player that has sat in a workshop or a shed or a garage over the years and decades? If you do, please let me know in the comments. I always like hearing what other people have in relation to this kind of stuff and what you remember of it. Uh, or if you still have it for that matter, I'd love to see photos of it. I'm thinking of actually putting together like a big photo project, an album, 
not a book because nobody's going to want to publish this, but some kind of portfolio on sheds and garages. And the music systems therein are of particular interest to me. I think it's a real anchoring point, often in a very chaotic looking workspace. But yeah, so thanks very much for watching. You can find more of my work at calumgillis.com. And of course, you know, leave a like if you enjoy my videos. Subscribe if you want. I do release videos now and then. But at the end of the day, do what you want. I am going to work on my workshop and various projects. And I'm going to listen to some music. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye-bye. Video's over, guys. You can go. I've got a terrible cold literally drinking whiskey from a bottle it's gotten that bad i recorded this entire thing and then found out that it had not recorded and i had to record it all over again and it has absolutely killed my voice so it better have been worth it